You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, this guy never shuts up. <laughs> Marcellus right? Wiley's in the building. Good morning, sir. Yeah. All right, I'll let you do your intro. Other than that, I don't shut up, man. But respect, <laughs> man. How you guys doing, I'm man? I'm blessed, my brother. I never met you. I didn't realize you were so goddamn big. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, and I lost 40 pounds in the last six months. So wait, wait, wait. you shouldn't have saw me last year. It would have been a problem. And yeah, when he was yeah, out there, he said, I didn't know Charlemagne was so small. I, I didn't <laughs> say that. I know Charlemagne through a lot of people. You know, yep. Carrie Chapman, Carrie, Van, Van, Jason Nick, Whitlock. Whitlock. You donkey of the day. Them always donkey of the day. <laughs> always? Always donkey of the day. I actually stopped giving him donkey of the day because Bomani told me to stop doing it because he likes the attention. Hey, that's one thing in this, this new culture, man. This clickbait and everybody getting that love. Mm. Despite being right, they just getting all that attention from it. So sometimes you can't feed that fire. But uh, he, he's, he's different than you think. Persona mm -hmm. versus person. Uh, I always try to remind people because I've only been there a month. So Yeah, I missed the move. I remember because yeah. you and Carrie was doing... We were doing Sports, Sports Nation. Nation. Yep. And we did that and then free agency contract was up. So it was time to go get it. And um, I knew a lot of the execs from Fox from day one ESPN. So uh, long story short, I made the transition. And the first thing that everybody hit me with was, yo, you working with Jason? Yeah, Chill out, yeah, man. You got to go get that dude. Set him <laughs> straight. And I was like... What y'all talking about? The Jason I know is cool cat. So uh, You know some of his political views, though, are kind of oh, yeah. ridiculous. It's like he makes it a point to tear down some of our best and brightest in the black community. Yeah, I, I look, uh, in today's world, if you disagree, then all of a sudden you got to dislike, and mm -hmm. then you got to distance yourself. And I don't like that. Um, his, some of his political views, I would say, first, he says he's not political. All right. We still hear it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The thing about it is when he starts to talk about people, I think the greatest criticism of him is he treats our misdemeanors worse than their felonies. There you go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. catch it, and I see it, and then we have that conversation. But I do love that I'm not in the echo chamber anymore, like always with like minds and always mm -hmm. with people echoing what I'm thinking and saying. So I respect that even if we come from a different place, we can respectfully respect the process. We have a through. conversation. Was yeah, it, yeah. Was, did it get hard working at ESPN because ESPN was basically like, shut up? You know what I'm saying? Basically, huh. like, Jamel Hill put a muzzle on you. We don't want no political views, no social views, nothing like that. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, that never comes from up top. That never mm -hmm. comes from the sidelines. No one ever comes up to you, a producer, say, hey, that topic right there, chill out. Mm -hmm. um, there's no police like that. Mm -hmm. You just see the casualties of war. You see what happens. Uh, you see how it affects someone's career. And even in that situation with Jamel, uh, she still was on air the day after. She still had an opportunity and a runway to express herself but behind closed doors, who knows what was going on in terms of collateral damage? But yeah. you're just another person going to work. Like, is that my lane? Uh, is that my conversation? And what responsibility I have to go out there and present it and present it the right way? So Jamel's situation was unique to her. Uh, she still landed on her feet. Uh, but, you know, when you're talking sports, sports is not the same as it used to be. It used to be performance. It used to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, I read my paper, uh, watch the highlights, and you tell me what else I need to know. Now, everybody feels like they already know what they want to know. Mm -hmm. And it's just up to you to color in what they already have framed. And that's a whole different animal. So some people say, since it's already full, I'm going to do more. And sometimes that gets out of hand or out of bounds. Did you want to work for uh, the Fox Sports? Or was, was that just what they were the people that came to make an offer? Uh Contract year, January 1, gotcha. I, I, I was thinking I was going to stay at ESPN. Mm -hmm. And that turned into uh, the execs at Fox telling me, hey, man, this is a better opportunity for you for these reasons. You can have an open platform, conversational. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be more real estate on the network. We're going to pay you way more to do way less. That always made me feel good. And um, He's like, where'd I sign up? Yeah, yeah where'd I at? <laughs> uh, I, could, I could pick up my little man, work out, go to work, pick up my little man, uh, you know, that that started to make sense. You work out? A little bit. Can't that, tell. I, I, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the layers of, of the fat, it's something in there still. I'm holding on to something. But, yeah, man, it, it, it it's open over there. Mm -hmm. What I like about it is they really support you. So when you see Whitlock go crazy and you're like, yo, that's a lot, it's because he has that latitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah, got to yeah. respect it even mm -hmm. if it's different than what you think. And 
on a daily, a lot of times I agree with the dude, but it's just, you know, what's going to get the clicks is usually going to be the stuff that you disagree with. Yeah, I think Whitlock, uh, I think he he hates on the people who remind him of the black athletes he went to high school with because those were the black athletes that used to get all the white women that he couldn't get. <laughs> no. I really feel that way. <laughs> you think that? No, you know who he is? He's the black conservative in your neighborhood. Uh, we all grew up around him. The guy was like, if y'all act better, y'all pull y'all pants up, y'all be better. Yeah, 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 you yeah. know, y- your social behaviors would change all your situations. Yeah, yeah. Social behavior things. would change systemic racism. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think he comes from that because he he grew up in the church, uh, so he's an idealist, and then he starts to take that, and he's like, I got everything by doing it the right way. Uh, once I got on a, bo- a board and in accord with that, things started to work out for him. So he's just trying to replicate that message. Not so mad at it. You you grew up in Compton, right? Yeah, Compton, South Central, L.A. What's that you claim? Where you from? <laughs> First of all, yeah, you talking like that. that. Bro, you talking like that. First of all, <laughs> wait a minute. But you see how I naturally got? You see how naturally I went with? It's about to get crazy. <laughs> Where you from? No, you no, from? no like real talk. See, I, I'm I'm from L.A. Pre NWA, I always like to make that that known because What's that's that mean? gang banging was for real. Ooh. Like Crip walking was a sign that I'm a Crip, and if you got a problem, I'm right here. Uh, the colors were real. We yeah, couldn't yeah, wear yeah. red. You could not know. Oh, I'm gonna wear red. It's a splash. It's cute. It's fashionable. You couldn't do it. So. It's crazy growing up in those times and now seeing how it's glorified and mm-hmm. uh, how it's become some kind of symbol of coolness. When I grew up in it, it was nothing but pain and hardship. And mm. cats were trying to escape, and then they went to a wrong, bad place in that escape. So uh, I used to look at those moments. Those were some of the darker times, bro. Right. Like you know. So when I heard uh, what set you claim. When I, growing up, that meant assault <laughs> is about to happen. <laughs> right, right, right. At minimum. Like, it at, took right back. At yeah, minimum. Where you from? Yeah, yeah. That, that's never a pleasantry. <laughs> but Marcel, as, as, an, athlete, minimum as an athlete, were you kind of exempt from that? Because I know supporting somebody who's an athlete or somebody that's about to make it, what was that like for you? Oh, oh man. I, I think my support system came different. I, I know that's what's been said in the movies mm-hmm. and, and in the rap songs, but... My sister was my first protector. Thank God my sister Tiki, older than me, she used to like to throw them hands. So (laughs) she warned the school every time I got there in the grade before, like, my brother is mine, and that's my little teddy bear. So, one, I have family in in the gangs. So it's not something you raise your hand and say, I want some hard uncles. I want some gangsta-ass uncles. Mm -hmm. But when it happens, you got a little force field around you. Mm -hmm. So um, then I start balling, and... My balling helped me because I was really a nerd. Like, I was a dude in class, showed up fourth grade, hand in the air. I, yeah, I want to be on the academic decathlon team. Yeah, I want to do the spelling bee. And Cash used to clown. And they'd be like, this is nerd fool. This is a little dude trying to be all smart and all that. Mm-hmm. But then they get me out there on the court, on the field or whatever. And then I school them up. Bust their ass. Yeah. So then they like, <laughs> I don't know where to go with this dude. So then if you still wanted to test, then you knew my family. And then it was a problem. And then if that didn't work, Tiki was right there in your face giving you hell. So, so I you had, never joined the game? No, not even close. I didn't even want to, man. Um, you see it? And on, look, that collateral, that, 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 that money they got out there, that currency they get from... The girls and the cars and all that love. I saw my uncles come in the house and cry. Mm. And they demand as soon as they leave the house. Like everybody walking up to, what up, what up, what up, what up? And then as soon as they walk in the house, they sitting there with all the pain. Mm. And I saw that. And I realized you don't have what you out there portraying. So once I got to go behind the veil, I realized that ain't for me. Was there one specific moment that you saw from your uncles that made you be like, I'll never get involved in that lifestyle? Ah, I didn't see it, thankfully, but uh, my one of my uncles uh, committed suicide around the corner from my grandmother's house, his mother, and she heard the shot. Mm. So when that hit and the pain of that hit the family, uh, and, and at this time I already had an uncle that was murdered, um, another uncle not doing so well. I just think that it all started to make me realize I got to put this cape on and be responsible for this family because too much low ambition around us. You know, everybody, the drugs, the gangs, the poverty, but it was just like nobody lived out their desires. Nobody dreamed a life and realized it. Everybody was just working jobs, not careers. And when that happened and I was like, it's so bad here that he doesn't even want to be here. I got to change this and get us out of here. So, 
uh, I just had a dual balance, man. It was just academics, athletics, simple. And I know I, I, I took a lot of shots from people because uh, I I didn't want to hang out. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Nintendo wasn't my best friend. You know what I mean? I was like, I got to go get this. And uh, it was heavy at times, but that's just what I had to do to get my family out the hood. Now, you played in the league for, for 10 years. Yeah. Now, you mentioned your little man a, a, a little a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Would you let your little man play in the league? Oh, the league, yeah. Uh, oh, play, oh, oh, I should the, say play football. The road to the league is is, is the problem. Um, no Pop Warner, no youth football, tackle football. Not about that. Uh, I shouldn't have been nine years old going to school with a concussion, mm. but I did. <laughs> you know, wow. I shouldn't have had bull in the ring and you know, the Oklahoma drill when I was eleven. But bull I bull in the ring. Yeah, bull in the ring. What's that, that? They put one dude. Put you in the ring, Charlamagne. And everybody Charlamagne hit him. In, Show him. in the middle. <laughs> and then we're going to surround you by, like, you know, 10 of the other mm-hmm. guys on the team. They hit him. And then we all go have a number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Damn. And then he just starts screaming out numbers. And you got to keep your head on the swivel and see where that number coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't do that anymore, though. Yeah, not on not on film, mm-hmm. not on camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure somebody out there trying to get that, but yeah, they outlawed that. Mm-hmm. Wow. You yeah. remember your first big check? Because I saw you talking about seeing somebody else's bonus. And yeah. then realizing, damn, I got to get out there and get it. Yeah. Um, well, I got signed. It's weird when you get signed and drafted in the NFL. So that happened for me in April. You ain't getting no money. Like, everybody's like, oh, you made it. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm still here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I get my check, like, in June, July. So it's a couple months. And every day felt like, damn, when's it going to kick in? And then <laughs> I went to the same bank that I had gone to my entire life, off 57th and Crenshaw, and – I'm used to giving them 300 bucks every month or something. They like, oh, it's a little work study job. Oh, Marcel's <laughs> doing all right. You know, come in with some Jordans here and there. And then that one time I walked in, and, I, and this was an installment of my first check. It was 99,000 of a $500,000 check. And it was 97. And, and I knew she was going to say something because every time I come in here, she got something to say. So I just gave her the check <laughs> and I just kind of sat back and was just waiting. And she was just ready to put her $300 do- <laughs> slip down. And she looked. And she saw them commas, and she was like, girl, my cell is rich, girl. And started going ham all in the back. Everybody acting up, everybody running to me. And I'm like, we still on Chris, y'all, y'all. We can, we can calm this down. We talk about this later. But it was love. So I saw some crazy stuff in the, in the league. The craziest stuff is we're before direct deposit. So this means you see an actual check when right. you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember walking in there, and I'm just a second-round pick. I'm a I'm – a, I'm not low on the totem pole, but I ain't no vet making big money. Mm-hmm. And my check that week was like 30000 And I was like, let me go see what like Bruce Smith making or something like that. <laughs> Suckers checks was like 800000 Damn. Yeah. Sheesh. Net. I was like, damn, man. <laughs> damn. Oh, I don't ball, boy. I'm messing this what up. Did, what, what did you learn from them legends? Because you were you, you Thurman Thomas, Bruce Smith. Yeah, Andre Reed. There? Andre Reed. Was Jim Kelly still there then? Nah, he retired okay, when okay. I got there. Got yeah, so... You learn that um, football is a great game of skill, but it's a greater game of will. Mm. Uh, football will pre- present itself every single day in a different way and always a new obstacle, a new wall. Uh, there are days when cats couldn't walk, but they had to run for three hours, whether it's through injections, adrenaline, or just pure will. You got to go get it. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's no other sport out there that challenges you as deeply as football does. So what I learned from them is, man – they honed their craft to a point where they they didn't try hard. We used to say they try easy. Mm-hmm. Like it Bruce one day come to practice, legs crossed in sweats. We in pads. He like, man, I'm chilling. I I I play on Sundays. And we like, damn. You start thinking, he lazy. He don't want to really work at it or something. Man, he comes out there so efficient, so smart, does a few plays, gets his mental reps. And if you try to challenge him, even though he in sweats, he still destroyed you mm. and then just walk off the field. And we were like, that's a whole different animal, different level of genius and of, of mastering his craft. To me, man, the most impressive thing about you isn't the, the, the physical capabilities of football. You're an academic. You mentioned mm. that earlier, but you yeah. actually went to Columbia. Yeah, I went yeah. to Columbia, man. And that was a decision that I had to make. Uh, I wanted to be presumed intelligent. Um, my teachers helped me understand this. Uh I remember going on all my recruiting trips, and they were football factories, and everybody was like, oh, you come back, you come back from a UCLA trip, Cal, no slight to the schools, but everybody's like, oh, that's amazing. Oh, my God, we can't wait to see it at the Rose Bowl, man. It's going down. And I remember telling my same friends I'm going to Columbia, and they're like, the hell is Columbia? Mm-hmm. 
He was like, is that in South America? And I was like, man, y'all <laughs> ain't. I, like, I can't deal with y'all. But then I told my teachers the same exact recruiting trips. And everyone's eyebrows were raised when I said Columbia. They're like, go there. And I was like, but their, their, their football's not that good. It doesn't matter. And what they were telling me was, once you're done with the game, and you're going to be done with the game, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. what are they going to think about you then? And I've seen teammate after teammate struggle in that uphill battle to make people think that they're intelligent, that mm. they have something beyond mm. football. So dumb jock is the first thing you see. Big black Compton football player, dumb jock. I ain't got time to run up that hill every single time yeah, I meet yeah, somebody yeah. and shake their hand. So this Columbia on the resume – affords me the respect that I desire. Um, I'm presumed intelligent, and more importantly, I have the latitude to be whoever I am, and people still have to have a kernel of respect in what I do. When you don't have that, if I come up here and I'll say, I went to Alabama Tech, a and people are like, mm, all right, so tell me about your football career. You know, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to just be narrowly focused in that lane my entire life. Uh, following this Aaron Hernandez story, right? Mm. I want to know what you think about whether or not an NFL player today, what it would be like for them in the locker room to come out. Because we're hearing all these different stories and people talking about Aaron Hernandez and his whole backstory. What is that like in the locker room? I played with a gay player. Didn't know it at the time. Ezra Tuwala. Um, this is in Buffalo. Uh, and his locker was sandwiched between mine and Bruce Smith's. And there was only one moment where <laughs> it was weird because this is like late 90s, so uh, we, we weren't too PC. And y'all knew he was gay? No, we didn't. Okay, okay, okay. But then one day we're playing in Toronto. We're playing the Green Bay Packers, Reggie White and all them boys. And somehow, some way, he volunteered to sing the national anthem. So we were sitting there like, this is like late 90s. Like, that didn't mean he was gay. <laughs> no, nope, I'm going to get there. Oh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> I ain't there yet. All I'm right, just right, like, right, oh, he got a voice. Okay, okay. respect. You know, he's trying to get his album out. So he goes out there and sings it. And that was the first Before time. Before the game, you ain't saying Wait, now, you, now you're getting where I'm at. We in full uniform. He is too. He puts his helmet to the side. And he started hitting it. But he started hitting it like he was into it. So we were like, all right, we got a game to play. And he don't look like he in our mindset right now. He, oh, say. And he just whining and stuff. And we like, whoa, okay. He grind in the air. We like, all right, whatever. He came back. And that was the first time somebody was like, hey, man, you all right? And then that was the only thing. That ain't that what happened. No. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> Somebody used another word. Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I've worked at Disney for 11 years. Can I go there? Can I say that? I ain't going to say that. I got a bunch of sales. These kids. I was like, that Disney kid. But in. you prefaced it by saying it was the 90s. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. You know no, what it wasn't PC. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, y'all know. Y'all got to fill in a little. We know blanks. the word. Right. So, he yeah. went there. And we were like, and he was like, what, what? And then we were like, all right. Nothing else. I look up one day watching, like, HBO Real Sports or something, and he's on there, and he's like, yeah, I've been gay my whole career and all that, and I never told teammates. And then I saw him after that, and I remember talking to him. I was like, bruh, why did you just say it? Like, I wouldn't have tripped. I know a lot of guys that wouldn't have tripped. He said, it ain't about y'all. It's about the one that would have and then what I would have had to deal with as a result of that. So, mm. you know, him being mm. in the closet was really trying to protect himself from other cats. And – being real, on that team, on every team I've been on, there's always one who so close-minded, so gangster with it. So he would have tried to get his troops, and then it would have been a problem. So I would have been fine with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not tripping. Like, I'm in the shower, and you looking. Cats, heterosexual, regular players be in the shower knowing stuff about cats. So I'm like, if that's what you mean, knowing stuff about cats? Cats be in there. Like, we used to have this reporter. Watch this. We had this reporter. We used to uh, call him the Watcher. Mm-hmm. So you know the Dr. Dre song, watch. Yeah. Every time we walk around, <laughs> we see, watch. Because the cats be over That's there. That's a weird song for the shower, by the way. <laughs> Jay-Z Dre, watch. Because you knew it that, was a, sneaky. that was a signal. <laughs> yeah. Like he out there measuring meat. So you got to be careful. <laughs> That's how it was. Oh so gosh. he go there and try to talk to y'all while you're in the shower. No, yeah, he, he, he walk you right to the shower. <laughs> and we be like, watch. <laughs> I got stories like that all day. Cause That's he, the next he, he knew the size of the players. Oh, he knew me. Like, 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 <laughs> no, it was meat crazy. measurements is funny as hell. He it knew the measurements real, of the meat. It's, it's a real thing. So I mean, these dynamics. Is, uh, NFL locker room, the craziest place in the world. It's the best place in the world because you got fifty three plus. Is it the dudes. best place? Best place. 
I don't know now because it is more PC and you mm-hmm. got to watch out and everybody got a camera and somebody's on Instagram live right now and then filming what you said. But back then, no holds barred. And I thought that that was a beautiful place to to kind of grow up because mm-hmm. now uh, I've learned how to be in the real world, but also how to pull no punches if I'm in that spot again. You think the NFL is too soft now? I don't. Um I hear a lot of old can't tackle quarterbacks, and if you if you lay on them, it's, it's a penalty. It's, it's 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 yeah, I like that. I like that. I tell you why I like that. Mm-hmm. Protect the investment. What's the investment? The quarterback. Mm-hmm. What's second? Receiver. Let's be real about this. Ain't nobody trying to watch no Jacksonville, Tennessee nine to six game. Mm-mm. That happened a couple weeks ago. I was like, man, that's boring. I want to see forty three forty, like I saw with KC in New England. I want to see Super Bowl forty one thirty three. So they're protecting the investment. But you know us, we can't. We can't let go, man. Um, we hold on to our era all the time. Lawrence Taylor smashing oh. people and crushing people. Yeah. yeah. See, but based on what Crazy. you said just now, it's like then you just want offense. Defense has got his own magic, too. Think about Deion Sanders and mm-hmm. Charles Lawrence Haley Taylor. and Bruce Smith and yeah. Lawrence Taylor. Like. All highly trained athletes who can think faster than they react, who can think faster than they will act and pursue. So they train themselves to tackle properly and if we have changed what proper tackling is, how come they can't train themselves to do that? Mm. It's crazy. Nobody walked on a football field with perfect form tackling. Mm. You've learned that, and it's a conditioned behavior. And I think it's just really to speak to the public. Like, that's a podium talk. That's something you say that sound hard. Like, yeah, man, you know, they're making the game soft. All I say is, look, I'm not going to lose my money in the pursuit of one tackle because a sack is a sack. If I DDT you or if I just lay you down on the blanket, Guess what? One sack. The same way. But you want to send this message? Ain't no punks out there, dog. Like, ain't nobody out there going to get shook because you just went out there and tried your hardest. Mm-hmm. Like, I, all right. So my my mindset is I'm not going to hurt myself, my pockets, or my team. <clears throat> I'm just going to go out there, and I'm going to lay you down in a way that you know that you got sacked. But at the same time, I ain't hurt my team, and I ain't hurt myself. What about the instant replay? What do you What do you feel about that? Uh, it, it's hard to get it right, man, even if you slow it down. Because even, you know, uh, and, uh, like you said, our era, it didn't matter. Whatever the ref said, you left it there. But now it's like, hold on, bring that back, let's see. And it, and it, it kind of takes the the edginess away from the game. Yeah, man. I mean, the common denominator between what happened in live action and instant replay is a human being. And you're always going to have human error. Right. Like, think about it. Like, if you had a computer sitting there, sitting there saying, okay, this would happen, then you got something. But if you got another human being saying, slow that down and let me check this out, he's still going to be imperfect in what he sees. So uh, I was victim to the worst instant replay mishap ever. If y'all remember Music City Miracle, if that happened in 99, Buffalo Bills versus Tennessee Titans. I don't remember. We had the game won. It's like nine seconds to go. All we got to do is kick the ball off and tackle him. Game over. Man, they kick it to Lorenzo Neal. He throw it to Frank Wycheck. He throw it to Dyson. And they take off and win the game. And and win the playoff game in advance. Uh, It was a forward pass. Yeah. And it's the replay saw. Yeah, he threw it here and it landed up there. But you know what? (sighs) Maybe we shouldn't overturn it because there's not enough evidence. But what really happened on the field (laughs) – the referees went under under the cape, was looking at it, and them Tennessee fans and that Tennessee, that tongue came, hey, Bard, hey, y'all want to get out of here clear a lot? And it was just, come on, man. <laughs> it was real time. No. Like, they felt the pressure, bro. They were like, we are that's not crazy. overturning this one. And that ain't right. Well, I guess that's on field advantage, though. Y'all should have had on field advantage. There you go. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> and we should have started Doug Flute instead of Rob Johnson, but that's another conversation. Now, now Marcellus, being that you did go to Columbia, you know, um, are you a cultural cultural assimilator? Um, cultural assimilation? Um, I'm bilingual. Because you know how to kick it around the brothers, and then you know how to go <laughs> kick it with the, the other people, I guess. You know um, what I mean? You know what's that duality, man, yeah. to be bilingual. You know, it, it's something that's real, and... Uh, you know, Tennessee Colts, others talk about that. And I hate that um, that you are in a world where if you present yourself the same thorough everywhere, that is going to be perceived differently. Yeah. Because it's the same it's the same output, but it's going to be a different input. Um, I hate that, but certainly I know when when to be and when not to be whatever that is. You know the language in the land. Yeah, and yeah. we need to stop having resentment 
we need to stop having the pressure put on us by ourselves of, of being that. Because, look, when I'm in front of my teachers, black or white, I got a way to speak. Mm-hmm. I, uh, when I'm in front of my producers, when I'm in front of my boys, when I'm in front of my parents, like, we've learned so many languages, but we've broken it down to a dichotomy mm. of just black and white. I don't talk to my mama. I don't, my curse, front, I don't curse in front of my mom. Yeah, yeah like, either. you couldn't get away with those things, and even within the family scope you knew how to act and then you get outside the house you got to respect that so Mm. it's weird that we apply a lot of pressures on ourselves and then when we burst from that same pressure we get mad at everybody else it's like (laughs) ain't nobody talking about you like that like you know uh, DJ Khaled always say they I used to say that I said that when I was growing up and I ain't call it they I used to just hear everybody like man them over there and I was like Who's this chorus of invisible people that ain't really tripping on you like you think? Mm. But it's selective perception, man, and we get caught up in our own phobia. All right. Well, the book, Never Shut Up, Marcellus Wiley. Make sure you go pick it up, and we appreciate you joining us, Yes, brother. it comes out October 23rd. Very excited to read this book. We just got our copies today. Oh, so. today? Yeah. yeah. Damn, FedEx slipping. Why you call yourself <laughs> an NFL outlier? Oh, man, because I guess I didn't take the yellow brick road to the NFL. You know, mm-hmm. everybody said, hey, go to them big schools. Go that way, and I didn't, so... Uh, that's where it becomes different. And it, it became, in part, a fan experience since I didn't expect it to happen. I truly was living the dream. Okay. Right. Marcellus Wiley, it's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.